Hello everybody, Andy here again, right, another one of those serious videos I'm afraid. Uh, I'm reading in today's paper about uh, South Africa. Now I'm not South African, I've never been to South Africa and I probably don't know too much about South Africa. Maybe I should keep my nose out, but it's a subject that uh, crosses across many borders and not just political ones, but uh, physical ones as well. And the particular story was about the President, Thabo Mbeki, who has sacked his uh, Deputy Health Minister, and I'll try and get her name right, her name's Mrs. Noziwi, I hope I pronounced that right, Madlala Routledge. Now, whether you've heard about this lady before, I don't know. But um, in South Africa, as they have it in lots of other countries, especially in Africa generally, they've got a problem, a very big problem, with HIV AIDS. Now, Thabo Mbeki, the president, has been one of those sort of people who's completely ignored this. He's buried his head in the sand and taken advice from people who uh, may be brainwashing him, I don't know, um, and giving him all the wrong ideas and the wrong uh, sort of impressions about uh, what's going in, on in his country and about about the general problem with HIV AIDS across the world. I'll give you some uh, statistics, some data. Now, in South Africa, a thousand people every day die of AIDS or HIV AIDS. Uh, one in 10 is HIV positive, which is a frightening fact in itself. 1,400 people are infected every single day. Um, only about a third of those people actually get life-giving drugs or helping life-helping drugs and that's one of the problems which I'll come to in a minute. Um, another one here, we've got 1.2 million orphans uh, that have been made orphans because of AIDS. Teachers are dying at the rate of about 14 per week. Can you imagine what that's doing to the country? And the life expectancy expectancy in South Africa is now 47 years of age. Now that is absolutely dreadful and this raises lots of concerns as I said. The main uh, problem with this is that uh, the President, Thabo Mbeki, and his health minister uh, who's been called Dr. Beetroot. Now, <laughs> they call her Dr. Beetroot because she's been going around actually preaching that you can actually cure AIDS or HIV AIDS with beetroot and eating fruit and these sort of things. No, no sort of proper drugs, you know, this is, um, this is sort of a, without turning too nasty, sort of witch doctor type stuff. And this is what, it's, it's brainwashing some of the people over there who aren't maybe trying to get the drugs that they should get. The drugs that are available, the anti-retroviral drugs or whatever that we get over here in the West and in other other poorer countries right across the world, they only started introducing those in 2004 in South Africa and that was only because of an international outcry and, and the president, Mr Mbeki, <laughs> Mbeki, should I say, was more or less forced to do that, but he's, once again, he's now sacked his health minister, or sorry, the deputy health minister, uh, Mrs Routledge, because she's standing up to it, she's been promoting it and doing a lot of work across the world trying to get um, people interested and she's actually been trying to kick start some sort of revolution to uh, get people interested to start facing reality, facing the facts of what's happening in South Africa. Now, as I said, I don't want to go on and on and on about one particular country that I know nothing about and never visited, but it, this raises a couple of issues in my opinion. How can a president of a, a very influential country, uh, of probably the most popular or sort of the most uh, rich country in, in Africa itself, how can that particular president bury his head in the sand about a, 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 an issue that is basically killing his people a thousand people per day? Um, I'd like to know the answer to that one. I'm sure lots of South Africans uh, would as well. This crosses across other boundaries. As I said, this isn't just to do with HIV AIDS, which is the problem across the world. It's a very big subject. I know it's not easy to deal with. And, and that's, that's something that's patently obvious. But uh, I think most people in the world realise that uh, this needs to be faced up to. We have to face facts, as I said, face reality. Um, and this is with other subjects as well, people things like global warming, there's loads of different things, uh, poverty generally. A lot of presidents, a lot of governments across the world are burying their heads in the sand and hoping that this is going to go away. Now, these subjects won't go away, bad news doesn't go away. And they have to, these sort of subjects, the heavy topics, the big topics, they have to be tackled head on. And uh, you do wonder why sometimes how these people get um, voted into power in the first place and how they are kept in power. We could all name presidents, governments right across the world, whether it be your country, my country, or any country that you'd wish to think of. There are probably examples <laughs> very close to where you live uh, of governments and you think, how on earth did they get into power? How on earth are they allowed to continue into power? There's a 
particular government, not very far from South Africa that I could name, how they're still in power, I really don't know. How do these people get voted? Well, you and I vote for them, but we vote for them because we think they're going to do right by the country. Now, there's certain places, and I, I hesitate to say that Mr Mbeki is one of them, who is not serving his country in the right way, and there are other examples as well. Um, sorry about the little rant, but I said they're elected to serve their country and their country men and women, and in that particular country, and lots of other countries across the world, the presidents, the governments, the prime ministers, whatever it is, are not doing what they were elected to do. They're burying their heads in the sand about very, very important issues, world challenging issues if you went, whether it be HIV, uh, AIDS, whether it be global warming, climate change, whatever you want to call it, or loads and loads of other issues that you can probably think of yourself. So, sorry about the rant, I just read that in the paper and uh, got me a bit annoyed. I know it's not my country, but I don't want to see people suffer when I know it's completely, oh, a lot of the time it's completely unnecessary. If they were given the drugs, they would be able to do something about it. If they faced up to the facts and actually did a bit of education, a bit of self-promotion and that sort of thing, they might actually help. Um, and you don't, wouldn't get another thousand people tomorrow and a thousand people the day after who are going to be infected by HIV AIDS. And those people travel across the world. You know, if you go, you go there, as I said, one in ten are HIV positive. So doesn't bear thinking about, does it? Anyway, sorry about the rant, but I just had to get that off my chest. <laughs> I'll just speak to you again soon. Thanks very much. Goodbye.